Hello and welcome to week 36 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to dig in further on these back end bindings and I want to show a very specific trick that we can use if your situation warrants it. So it's a little bit more advanced, it's a one-off situation, feel free to tune me out if it doesn't apply to you, uh, but if it does apply to you I hope this is very beneficial. So here's what we want to do. Let's say we have the request comes in from the internet and it comes into our ARR, our Application Request Routing Server, and we want to bind to some back-end nodes. So let's say these green blocks here are eight front-end virtual IPs. Those are eight websites. And then, of course, each node has to host those websites as well, right? So we really have 32 bindings in play. But let's say you don't want to put 32 different IP addresses, which we talked about last week. If you don't want to put 32 different IP addresses on the nodes, are there tricks to funnel through to a single IP and yet still keep track of what request comes through? The answer to that is yes. So if you have a good foundation in the bindings and you feel comfortable with this, uh, I recommend you take a look at it and see if this will benefit you. So here's what we want to do. Let's picture this. We have two sites, one called mycity.com and one called mysite.com. So let's say we have charlotte.mycity.com, Seattle. We have a whole bunch, too many to manage with just a domain name. Okay, so we want to actually bind by an IP. So anything.mycity.com will point to this IP. Let's say 240, 10, 240, 10. Now, we have another one just the same way here, but it's my site rather than my city with Mickey, Minnie, and Donald. And so we want to be able to bind those to a front-end VIP. Now here's the question. It comes into the internet, from the internet, to these nodes how does it know when it reaches these nodes, is it this site we're listening to or is it this one? And so last week we talked about three ways to tell. One is if we use the host header, but there's too many here for us to do that. Another is if we assign an IP address to every single one of these. Okay, so we have 32 on the back end if we had three nodes and eight sites. Of course, it could be way more if you have more sites or more nodes. And another option is you can actually bind to a unique port on these back-end ones here if you want to. But let's try something different. Today we want to actually use only three back-end IPs and we want to somehow be able to tell the difference. And here's the trick. Let me show, I'll explain it in theory and then we'll actually go to the servers and actually set it up. And so here we see the HTTP host and so asterisk dot something. So the HTTP host is the domain name. So the request is going to come in to something.mysite.com or something.mycity.com. What we're going to do is we're going to take that HTTP host and we're going to tuck it off to the side. We're going to store it in another HTTP header called HTTPX original HTTP host. So we're going to set this equal to HTTP host. Now we can set the HTTP host so we're, we're manipulating these headers on the way through is what we're doing. So we can now set HTTP host to a specific value, let's say my site or my city. Then on the bindings on these back end nodes for site one, we'll listen to my site. For site two, we'll listen to my city. And but now you're going to say, okay, what about the developers? I, they actually use HTTP host for some reason or other. No big deal. We just put it back again because we have the value from HTTP original host. And I have a typo there. HTTP host and so we just set it all the way back again no big deal. Does it make sense? So the request comes through we're going to manipulate it to flag what the site's called when it reaches here it's going to bind and then it's going to set it back and what's also convenient is the bindings to HTTP host to the site are made very upfront right at the very beginning then URL rewrite comes into play we change it back again but then after URL rewrite is when the developers have access to HTTP host and, um, and, and the IS logs and anything else are done after URL rewrite. So as far as a developer is concerned, you would never know that you've been manipulating these headers because we changed it and we put it back again. Hope that makes sense and that I wasn't talking too fast. So let's take a look now and see it set up in action. Okay, so right now I'm on the ARR node and I have my two sites and so this is just left over from last week and so what we're going to do is let's remove this 
and the IPs that I had in that diagram for site 1 were, it was, actually it doesn't matter, site 1 or site 2, because we're just finding all three. So it was 10.240.230.20. And and 22. We set up the other one exactly the same and again I mentioned briefly last week but you can use a single server farm if you want to achieve this because these are identical so you may want to use a different one because of the different health checks and so that allows you to if a site goes offline you can take it at a rotation independently of the other servers. Okay, So let's remove these ones and we'll set this up again. So 20 21 and 22. Okay, so now this has been set up. Now let's do the front end VIP. Okay, so we're going to go and let's create a rule and let's call it VIP and we'll call it mysite.com. And if it comes in anything in the URL, we're using regular expressions, so dot asterisk refers to anything. Now in the conditions, what we're going to do is we're going to say server address. That is the IP address that it comes in. And that, if it matches, and so we're going to say 10.240.230.10 was our site 1 IP, if we look back at the diagram, right here, 10.240.230.10. And then the other one we'll set up in a minute is this 10.240.230.11. Now it's regular expression, so really we need to be more accurate here. And we escape the special characters. Okay, and now, so what we've done is if it comes in on this IP address, we're going to route to uh, site one, and actually I should have renamed that to my site. Let's do that, actually. So this one is really my site, and this one is really my city. Okay, so we go to my site and route to my site. Okay, so now we've done the bindings, but we have this extra fancy tucking off to the side. So here's how we do it. So we bind by the IP, but now in the server variables, a new feature available in, in URL rewrite 2.0, I guess it's been out for a while now, uh, So, but if you do happen to be on 1.0, make sure you upgrade. And so we're going to say the server variable is HTTP, X or I G I original HTTP host is what we're going to use, and let's set that to HTTP host. And notice that I don't have the curly braces on the top because it's it's an actual name, and on the bottom I do because it's actually a variable. So what we're doing is we're tucking the HTTP host off to the side so we can retrieve it again later. Now the next thing we do is we're going to make HTTP host actually be my site, a hard coded value. And that's it. So we've set up this node, and I could set up another for my city, but you can see it's going to be identical. The only difference is going to be the IP is going to be dot eleven, and this here is going to be my city instead. So now let's set up the back end nodes and we'll test and see if it actually works the first try for us. Okay, so let's take a look here at the web server and here's how we set it up. So what I've done is I've set up two sites and called mysite.com and mycity.com and they point to somewhere on disk, doesn't really matter. Now the bindings is where it's important. Now look at this, it's kind of interesting. We set up all unassigned, we don't care what IP address it comes in, so it could be the IP of any of the servers, but we give it this made up but very important host name, mysite, and that's what the HTTP host that we had just changed is going to use. And so we do the same here to mycity and we set that as well. And that's all it needs for the binding, unless you want to add another one for your load testing as well. Sometimes you do a unique one there. But now we have the second aspect here in this diagram, which is to put this back again. We need to take that HTTP original HTTP host that we tucked off to the side and put it back in HTTP host again. Okay, so what we can do is create a rule that can switch that back. And what's handy here is we only have to create it once for all the sites and even all the servers because we're using shared config. So URL rewrite, we just say we want to take a rule and we'll do a blank rule and we're going to say so we'll set the HTTP host back and we'll say with a pattern is anything here 
And in our conditions, we're going to say, uh, we can actually say where HTTP X original HTTP host does not match blank. So we're only going to do this if there's something in the HTTP original host. Now in the server variables, we just simply say HTTP host is HTTP sorry, HTTP X O R I G original HTTP host. Okay, and we switch this back, and then we're going to say for action, none. We're not going to do anything else. And so really it's only doing this one change, and we hit apply. So if we did this right, and I didn't make any mistakes, well, we'll see, my fingers are crossed, uh, this should actually work for us. And so let's take a look. We're going to go to our front end node. Let's go to, and the one we set up was my site.com, and we'll execute. Notice we have a 200 status. Let's take a look here at what that looks like, yeah. So my site. So amazingly, it worked here, and we have the whole flow is set up. Now I did have to fix one thing I forgot to show here, is the server hadn't been set up with a base site. So oftentimes the ARR node won't have these extra test sites. They're just for the backend nodes, and we have just ARR base instead. So I just did that, and I made sure that my binding, in this case is a wildcard, but I could have had the binding of 10, you know, 240, well, not in here the bindings are set in here instead. And also there was one mistake that I just troubleshooted here in the back end that when I showed the video is this my site was actually my site was dot eleven, not dot ten. So I fixed that and that allowed it to work. So there we go, just a very specific thing. Quick recap. We have the traffic course comes in and we're able to take this HTTP host, and I didn't show the headers, uh, we could have spent more time and looked at it, but you can trust me there that what we did is we set them back again on the other end, and so was able to bind to the sites, but a programmer, if they happen to depend on HTTP host, they're never going to know the difference, it works perfectly for them, and we have two completely different bindings coming through on different IPs, and unlimited amount of domain names, the domain does not matter whatsoever, it uses the IP for all of the logic uh, for the back end. Hope you found this useful. Tune in for more upcoming and future weeks. Thank you. Hope you have a great week.